guys, welcome back. I know it's been a long time, and I'm sorry about that, but I've been working on this giant thing. And yeah, what this is, is a creeper survival game. It's still in its building stages, but it's been a while, and I figured I'd give you guys an update, and I need some help playtesting this and whatnot. I'm probably going to have to go through and change a lot of stuff, but it's functional for now. And yeah, so basically, what it is, is like creeper survival, like I said. And in this room is what you choose what you want to use. And you have stuff such as leather armor up to diamond armor, and you can use any type of sword. And if you want wooden, it's four, and if you want diamond, it's one. Then over here, you have your food. You can have any amount you want. Say I wanted to throw a melon, you hit the button. If I wanted some pork, I'd hit that button. And if I also wanted some golden apples, I could hit that. On this side, you can have as many of these as you want. But on that side, you can only select one of each. And for potions, I guess I'll choose a healing and a swiftness. I'm not going to play a full game, I'm just going to give you the gist of how it works. And armor, I'll just do iron. And once you choose everything you want, what you'll do is come over here, hit the dispense button, and everything is going to be sent out now. And I already reset it, but you'd also have to do that upon finishing a game. And all these wonderful items are falling down now. And you go pick them up, and you suit on up. And you arrange them any way you want. I'm probably not going to really use the potions. I'm just going to do a quick game here. And once you're ready to go, you'll head on in here. The door opens up, and you enter into the field. And now, it's pretty simple. There's buttons up ahead because you need to hit them to choose the next level. There's a giant creeper face, and the door's actually right there. And you have these eight, um, eight torches that display the difficulty of the level. Let me just turn off the rain. We don't need that. And basically, this is the first three levels, and that's the first, the next three, and this is the next two, and then from there on out, it's hard. You cannot win this game, it's not meant to be one, it's just to be, really survive as long as you can, so let's begin. Now, the reason why the buttons are so high up is due to the explosions of the creepers. I couldn't really put much lower. And, as you see, it's the first level, it's only two creepers spawned, and there's kind of a glitch where you have to jump to get their attention. So, once you do that, they'll come down and attack you. The rules are that you're not supposed to attack them if they're up there. But, you go on, you do this a bit. Oh, come on. This button does not want to get hit. Oh, it's because I have a sword. There we go. And this is still level 2, so there's only two creepers again. You have to get their attention, bring them down. And, yeah. Now, I'm going to change the creative, and I'm going to show you how this works. And it's pretty big on the outside. It still has some bugs, I think. And it's actually pretty fun. I tried it. It just it takes a bit for it to really start picking up pace. But once you do really start picking up, it will send out up to eight creepers on the red levels, and six on the orange, and four on the yellow. And the spawning item system is totally different from the spawning mob system as all these buttons are wired up into this, this into the sensor which sends it through this T flip flop that activates the doors to allow the creepers out and at the same time it travels down here and activates any I mean all these torches which will enable some of the creepers to be spawned but I'm also using a control system which is just a basic little piston memory array and that acts as like uh, AND gate I believe to enable certain ones to spawn which I'm pulling out from here if this bottom right one's enabled, the top left one up there is going to be enabled. I did that to help send the creepers into like different areas and not just in one direction all the time. And they also pull inputs from up here to indicate the lights. So if this one's active, the first light's active, and so on all the way down. Now the items are tricky to do, and you can only play about 144 games if this thing's fully filled before a refill, which I don't really think anyone's going to get to. But for items, I'm using two different methods. On this side, I'm using really compact T flip-flops. And then I'm sending the signals up again, and I'm running them through AND gates. So whenever you hit the dispense button, it would go through and turn off any torches. And whatever torches aren't active behind it, it will send the power to the dispenser. I'm using, um, for four times items, I'm using the levers to glitch it. So it gives you a two times upon state changes. And I'm also using this, so it goes through, it will activate it, then it will deactivate, then the second signal will finally go through and activate it. Now, 
the reset button I didn't really demonstrate to you, so it is going to lag me, and I want to kind of break the floor a bit more. And all these floors are actually hooked up to a bunch of cobblestone generators, just four total. And underneath, I didn't really explain, but if you fall through a hole, you just die in lava. So you have to be careful of always where you are and whatnot. But what you do is you come back once you respawn. I actually set the spawn point to be right here. You'd come down, you'd hit the reset button, and you wait in here, but you can go out here and watch. It has to cycle through all the levels, just the way I set it, and yes, my computer's lagging very bad. But as you can see, the cobblestone's filling back in, and how that's working is down here, I'm pulling the button signal, and it's this iron block line right here. I bring it down here, down to the cobblestone generators, and from here down, I have it go to a, hold on, it goes to this boat, I mean, it goes to a dispenser which shoots an arrow underneath the boat, which activates a one minute timer for this clock to go that runs through and sends the signals to the cobblestone generators to fix it. And it worked out pretty good, it's just I really haven't had much time to build this. And oh my god, this is lagging bad, yes. But if you'd like to give it a try, go ahead and download it. I need some reviews on what could be improved and whatnot before I release the full version. But that's really it for now, so go ahead, check it out, and tell me what you say. So thank you for any help. So see you guys later.